أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I would like to wish all of you and your families a happy and spiritual Eid Mubarak May Allah accept our fasts, our munajat, our hajats and may he hasten the reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa-Zaman, Adjallallahu ta'ala hu-Faraj al-Sharif, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. My name is Abbas Walji, and I represent, and I'm from the Al-Ahad Islamic Center located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Like all of you and like all of us, I am also learning and a student of the Holy Quran. Currently, I serve as a Quran teacher at the al ahl Islamic Madrasa. But today, my role is to represent the Ikra Quran Competition Organizing Committee. And in helping them bring a close to the Quran competition that they started in the holy month of Ramadan. Now, when they approached me to do this and to serve in this role, I did not hesitate. And I would like to share with you why I did not hesitate. The reason that, that I felt compelled to come forward and actually help them do this and participate here is because of the mission of the Ikra Quran competition. They have derived their mission from the Holy Quran. And the ayah that they chose to use for their mission of, from, of, of, the, of, the, of the Quran competition is from Surah Baqarah, the second surah of the, of, of the Holy Quran, uh, ayah number 148. So if you could please bring up that ayah for me, so I could share um, the, the, the learnings behind that. The <clears throat> the ayah, um, and I'll, I'll read the ayah to, to all of you, is A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Walikullim wijhatun huwa muwalliha fastabiqul khayrat And I'm going to stop right here. It's these last two words, fastabiqul khayrat, which basically mean for all of us to come together and compete against one another, compete towards doing good, towards achieving closeness and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word fastabiqul khayrat, these two words, they've come together in the Quran only twice. And I think Allah is using these words very, very specifically and, and, and carefully. The first one, as I mentioned, is surah number two, ayah number 148. The second one is surah number five, ayah number 48. And the, the, the message behind both these ayahs is very similar. In surah number five, Allah brings down, he says he's brought down the Quran as the truth. This is a guidance for us. And again, he reminds us or asks us to compete against one another to achieve closeness and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we'll talk a little bit more today about exactly how is it, it is that we're supposed to be able to do this through the Holy Quran and to use these ayahs and these words um, to achieve nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we get into the events for today, there, as you will see throughout the conversations and the presentations that we have lined up for you, there are going to be some very important messages from our leaders in our community, very short, wisdom-filled messages that I think we will all take some insight from. The first one um, th that we will have very shortly is from Sayyid Molana Rizwi. He is our beloved and highly respected scholar in North America and our alim who serves as res the resident alim in Jaffrey Islamic Center in Toronto. Secondly, right after that, we will have a, um, a short uh, message from Sister Fahmida Darsi, who is the head of Quran and curriculum at the Center of Islamic Learning under Nasimko. So with that, I'm going to welcome Sayyid Mullah Rizwi. Where Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, salawat. Allahumma salam. Participants of the Iqra Quran competition, the parents, <coughs> the teachers, and organizers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. 
I would like to first of all extend you um, Eid Mubarak as well as uh, congratulations in uh, your participation as well as the achievement that you have in the Quran competition. <clears throat> we do realize that Quran is basically the essential part of Islamic teachings. You can't have Islam without the Quran. There is a merit in reciting the Quran in Arabic because that is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is in other languages is the rendering of Allah's message according to the understanding of the translator. So yes, we have to learn the Arabic, uh, you know, uh, Quran and recite it in, in Arabic, but that is not the end of the story. We have to understand what is the Quran. And it's not only for the month of Ramadan. Quran is our holy book. Quran is our main source of our values and teachings. So we have to be familiar with it. Reciting the Quran in Arabic is just the beginning. You know, you have to then find time and ways and means to uh, understand the meaning of the ayat of Quran, to look at the translation of the Quran, and later on, when you have the uh, time uh, and the willingness to actually go into the interpretation and the commentary, uh, reading the commentaries uh, of, of the Quran. Because remember, Quran is not just a book to be recited. It is a book which has been sent as a means of guidance. It is a book which is talking to us. And it can only talk to us if we understand what it is saying. And so this is where it's important to be in communication with the Quran. And so the more you get in touch with the Quran, more the Quran will touch, will talk to you. And that's where you will come to realize the, the value of this book and the message of the book that it is giving to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you all, and especially your parents, under his protection and may he reward the teachers uh, and the organizers who have been working in this uh, Quran competition, the Iqra Quran uh, competition of Nasimko. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the tawfiqat of everyone to be with the Quran, to read the Quran, to understand the Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين Our dearest participants of the Iqra Quran competition, families who have tuned in to witness the award ceremony, esteemed guests, our madrasa teachers, administration and staff, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has brought us to this most anticipated day. On behalf of Nasimko Sil's Quran chapter, I would like to thank the Ikra team under the capable leadership of Brother Zuhair Ratansi, the participants and their families and all dedicated volunteers for helping us make this event a success. With this event, we have successfully formed strong intermadaris bond through the representatives in the administration of each of the participating madaris. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلِكُلِّنْ وِجْهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا فَاسْتَ بِكُلْ خَيْرَاتِ Every community makes a direction of its own, of which he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the focal point. Through the bounties of Holy Quran, we have created our focal point, a community that finds support in their peers. We were excited to get messages through the judges, the moderators, and most importantly, to the participants and their families that they were able to foster relationships that will forever be secured under the banner of his holy word. SubhanAllah. Madaris administrations have recognized talents they want to foster and those they are inspired to help their students achieve by observing each other's skills. There is no better way than to motivate each other than by sharing practices, best practices that uplift each other. This unity is priceless. It adds value to what we foresee in the future 
of the Quran curriculums of Madaris across North America and Canada. Congratulations to all our participants and their families. We are recognizing the winners to motivate their colleagues to prepare for the next year. There is no giving up. We all need to come back better and stronger for the next year. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahsan Sayyid, Molana Rilwi, and Sister Fahmida Darsi for those messages. So with that, I would like to introduce um, uh, our first guest here today um, to help me go through this and tell us a little bit more about exactly what was going on behind the scenes on this Quran competition and how the competition was brought together. So our guest here today is Brother Zuhair Tansi who is the head of the Iqra Quran competition, the main organizer of this event. So, so Brother Zuhair, Asalaamu As Alaikum. How are you? Eid Mubarak to you and your family. Alhamdulillah, Eid Mubarak to you as well and to all those who are watching. Ahsan, Ahsan, thank you. Um, Brother Zuhair, I, I want to go right into this. So um, there are a few things that we want to achieve through this conversation today. The first one that, that I think is really important for you to share with, with the, our audience um, is exactly why we decided to do this Iqra Quran competition, why you specifically um, got involved and how is it that this whole thing came together. So please tell us a little bit more. Okay, sure. Um, thank you for that. So first, just want to get one thing clear. Um, I did not start Iqra. There was a whole team. But before we get into that, you know, let's give, I wanted to share some background. So our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In his final sermon in the famous hadith known as Hadith al thaqalain shared with us two weighty things that he was leaving behind. Kitab Allah, the Holy Quran, and Itrati Ahlul Bayti, his progeny, the Ahlul Bayt. And that these two would not separate till they would come together at the spring of Kautha. So it's really an opportunity and a duty for us individually and for our madaris to spring to action um, and to ensure we are creating that balance and becoming both Quran and Ahlul Bayt centric. And the question is, are we? So with that as the inspiration, as well as other established Quran competitions in our community, most notably, the Africa Federation's Quran competition, which was pioneered by our beloved Marhum Sayyid Hassan Nakwi, we met as a team for the first time on the 24th of February this year. Um, and we decided to use the month of Ramadan, the month of the Holy Quran, as the catalyst to bring our communities together. At that point, we didn't even have a name. But in eight short weeks, we went from idea to execution and Alhamdulillah, here we are tonight at the awards night. So back to your question, there are so many people that came together to make this possible. Um, I'd like to first recognize the core organizing team. This team was responsible for logistics, technology, marketing, surah selection, judge recruitment, moderators, um, the award ceremony, and so many, many other things. And so, you know, like you can see on your screen, I'd like to recognize from the Nasimko and Center for Islamic Leadership team, Brother Bakir Kishwani, Sister Femida Darsi, who you just heard from, um, Brother Kazim Pir Muhammad, who is the head of the SIL team, um, Brother Muzahir Tijani, Brother Muhammad Ali Sherali, who is the mastermind behind the closing ceremony in this production, um, Sister Samia Pirbai, and Sister Sadaf Hussein on the Nasimko and SIL team, and then um, you know, the core team who was actually focused on the programming of Iqra, um, Sister Alia Rizvi, Fatima Ratansi, Sister Fatima Kalfan, um, Sister Fatima Bai Virani, all the way from Dubai, Brother Kumail Kalfan, Sister Tanvir Pir Mohammed, and Sister Zinat Balu. So, you know, the core team essentially just created the framework. It was really the madaris and the point of contact or the focal points in each of those madaris that really helped make the framework real. 
within you know a one and a half to two month period from when we launched to when we actually had the competition, they were responsible for signing up their madrasa, for running pre-competitions in order to select the students that would represent their madaris at the Ikra competition, um, you know, and getting that whole thing together. And they really partnered with us. So if you could move on to the next slide, I'd just like to recognize, you know, at the end, we were able to move forward with this competition with the help of 19 madaris representing, you know, some of our oldest communities here in North America, mm -hmm. as well as some of the youngest, like the Islamic Ahlul Bayt um, Association Triangle in North Carolina. And our largest communities like Toronto, New York, and Orlando to the smallest like Buffalo and New York. Um, but most importantly, it was the 353 participants um, that you see on this slide here, aged from an adorable four-year-old all the way to a senior year, 18-year-old, as well as our incredible special needs participants. So I'd like to thank them, their parents, and their teachers who in a short runway made this possible. We also had um, several respected speakers from around the world. So on the next slide, you will see some of them here. Um, you know, some of which you, you already heard from Sayyid Rizvi today, and you'll hear a couple more later on the show. And these respected speakers provided words of inspiration and guidance, very short and succinct, but very powerful. And so my gratitude to them for their time. And if you have not had a chance to see these clips so far, um, they are available on the Nasimco Center for Islamic Leadership Instagram account. So you search for Nasimco Sil and you should be able to find that. Um, and they will soon be on the Nisimco YouTube page for those who don't use Instagram. Um, and then finally, with the framework in place and the Madaris and the participants on board, it was time to execute. And so we relied, um, if you can see on the next slide, we relied on the noble service of 49 respected judges, which, uh, which you see here. So predominantly from the United States and Canada, but also from as far as London, Dar es Salaam, and Dubai, you know, working late night on the, uh, in their time zone in order to help us deliver this competition. Um, we also had several judges that were nominated by and were representing the Madaris that were taking part. I mean, the goal was really to keep this participatory and inclusive. And then on the next slide, you'll see 18 moderators um, that you can see here um, who essentially spent their weekend afternoons in the holy month of Ramadan when we'd rather be sleeping, which is also Ibadah, but they spent their afternoons to ensure that the virtual sessions ran like clockwork. Um, so from myself and on behalf of the entire team, um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you and my deep appreciation to all of you for your time and your commitment and really your reward, your, your real reward and recognition is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... Abbas, that's a short answer to your long term. <laughs> no, Asant, you know, I, I think what really resonates with me here, Zuhair, it, it, one, one, one key point that I want to reflect with you on is, you know, when th this just goes to show, right, that as, as a community, when, when we want to come together and achieve a goal, um, we can all join hands and move mountains. I think what this, what this initiative that, that your team and, and everybody you, that you've worked with um, ha have have achieved here. I think that that's a lesson for us, right? And so, if we channel our energy, we put our minds in the right direction. Um, I I truly believe that you know there are there are things that that can unite us and, and can actually take us beyond um, beyond our imagination. Um, so I, I think that that was really good. I, I think what would also really help all of us, Zuhair, is to is for you to tell us a little bit more about exactly how. Um, the Ikra Quran competition was organized. What were some of the elements that you and your team were thinking about in terms of, um, you know, how would you, how 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 would you bring um, the, the students together? How is it that you would be judging them? How is it that you would be uh, evaluating their Quran? Um, and what was kind of the goal of of of, of each of these sort of um, evaluations that you've been done? And, and what is what is it that we have to look forward to um, in this event today? Sure. Um, so I'll give you a little bit and be as succinct as I can in terms of the makeup of the competition. For those who are, you know, core part of it may already understand, but for all the viewers that, that, are, that are watching this program, 
again, in short order, you know, we came together as a team. We created um, six age groups, um, like I said, age starting from four all the way to 18. Um, and it also included a non-competitive special needs group. There were then two categories of competition. The first being open recitation, which literally means open recitation that a participant is able to comfortably recite from anywhere in the Quran that we open up the Quran. And the second was a combo uh, category of memorization and quiz. Um, the youngest age group, which was age four to five and the special needs group were really the only two groups that did not have open recitation as part of their competition. Um, and then each group was allocated two surahs selected by our programming team um, as part of the memorization and quiz category. And then, um, you know, in order to get the participation, again, relying heavily on the point of contacts in each of the madaris, the madaris had the opportunity to nominate four participants per age group and category. Um, so, you know, that was made up of two boys and two girls per age group and per category. Um, and then fast forward to the weekend of April 24th and 25th, which was exactly eight weeks after the idea was born. Um, we had the open recitation category competition take place. <clears throat> and then two weeks later, um, we had the memorization and quiz competition take place. So each of these, uh, each of those weekends, we had four virtual Zoom meetings that were running simultaneously. Um, and so for the open recitation, as well as for the memorization. And then in each of those sessions, we had an average of four judges each, um, where they were essentially judging participants based on four key criteria. The first being fluency, the second being makhraj, the third tajweed, and the fourth styles. There were some nuances, obviously, with the younger age groups where, you know, the level of tajweed being marked was much, uh, much more, uh, less, much less strict. But essentially, those were the four categories that they were judging participants based on. Uh, the quiz competition, part, the participants were given 10 minutes to complete a short online multiple choice quiz for their allocated surahs. And, you know, like we said earlier, in terms of the objectives, this was really to help us, ourselves, the participants, the teachers to become a lot more Quran centric. And so, inshallah, as we come to the awards in a few minutes, um, we will give a shout out to all the quiz participants who achieved a perfect score. And we will also recognize and award the top performers above a certain level in the open recitation um, and memorization competitions. So hang on, let, let me, let me, sorry to interrupt you, Zuhair. Um, so, so tell us in, in the, the, the recognitions for the, for the open book and the, and the memorization. So there's no first, second, third, how, how is that going to be done? Sure, no, um, th thanks for that question. And, and that you're right, uh, there is no first and second. Um, the purpose of the competition is not to single out the best and discourage the others. Rather, it is to encourage collective competition so we can all improve together. And that is really the aim of the competition and the aim of the Holy Quran um, and becoming more Quran-centric. It is not entirely possible, you know, as well, to judge the ability of a participant in one five minute setting, right? Therefore, we will not, we, so therefore we will be recognizing and awarding all those above a certain level in open recitation and memorization. And we'll be calling out those participants, not in rank order, but rather in alphabetical order. And then finally, uh, Bas, it is important to note that even amongst our top reciters, there is a huge opportunity for improvement and to elevate the level of Quran recitation. And that is one of the key takeaways from this competition um, for our madaris, uh, their parents, teachers, and um, you know, madrasas to focus on. Abbas? Yeah, Ahsan, no, no, thank you. And and you know, I um I really like what, what you said about exactly what the goal of this 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 competition is, and and you know I, I commend you and your team for um, for how it is that you know we're not just going to default on one two three or who's the best, and like you said, discourage the rest. Um, but so you know, just like any initiative, right? Um, you you need a few elements that need to come together um, for, for for this thing to be successful. So so sounds to me like you had a great mission. I got caught into your mission and got the bug. Um, you had a great team that that really kind of helped you bring this whole thing together. Um, and you guys have been able to execute and actually now we're at the end of that. 
So what's next, right? For all of us that are viewing and are watching and are eagerly thinking about, you know, what's what's the future of this Quran competition? Are we one and done? Or do you and your team actually have a bigger plan here? And yeah. this is the last question, just so you know. Okay, I, and I think you know people are waiting to get to the the actual awards, and so we don't want to bore the uh, bore them bore them here. But you know, fair question, uh, fair question. So you know, I just shared with you one piece of feedback that we received uh, from the judges with regards to the general level of Quran recitation, even at you know a, a regional level, right? And so the opportunity for improvement there. Um, we have also received some thoughts on the short, you know, one time five minute window per participant, as well as to have this competition, you know, perhaps at a less busy time, maybe like in the summer. So we are going to take all that, all of that into account. Um, in addition to that, as you heard, you know, from the short timeline, all those that were involved from the organizers, madaris, judges, moderators, parents, and then most importantly, the participants, you know, they had a very short runway to put uh, this together, to memorize the surahs, you know, to practice their open recitation. It was a pretty short runway. Therefore, um, you know, there, there are going to be a lot of lessons to be learned um, and improvements to be made. And so we will, inshallah, be reaching out, requesting feedback, uh, which we can consider going forward. Um, finally, in terms of what this competition looks like going forward, all the possibilities are on the table um, and we'll be assessing uh, feedback and feasibility to decide um, on what the competition looks like going forward. However, and to conclude, what is most important is two things. Um, one, alhamdulillah, with you know all the help and support from everybody who's watching and everybody who was part of this uh, competition, and continuing the spring metaphor that I you know started off with in the start with the quote with the with the hadith of the Holy Prophet, the seed has been planted, mm -hmm. and as the famous hadith says, sow the seed in Shaban, irrigate in. Hajab, and then reap the harvest in yeah. Ramadan. Yeah. So the seed has been planted and together we need to ensure that it grows. So that was one. And then two, um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Muzammil, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, faqra'u ma tayassara min al-Qur'an. Therefore, recite the Qur'an as much as it may be convenient for you. So if we all young and old, organizers, participants, and parents, and the judges and the moderators and everybody, all of us, commit to Iqra, pun intended, to read and recite the Holy Quran, just a little, as much as it's convenient to us, the collective level of the Holy Quran in our communities will rise. Awesome. And like Sayyid we said, um, the more benefit we will be able to derive from the Holy Quran, and truly honor the words of the Holy Prophet in holding on to the Quran and to the Ahlul Bayt. Ahsant. Ahsant. Now, well said. Zuhair, I want to congratulate you and your team and all the participants, all those that were involved, the judges, the point of contacts, all the madaris, everybody for coming together, supporting this, 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 this competition. Um, I think we have a great cause. We have a great mission here. So inshallah, looking forward to seeing how this develops in, in the future. Inshallah. So, Asant, 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 Asant. so with that, we will now move on. Um, as I mentioned that there were some very important messages from the leaders in our community that we wanted to share with you. There's one message that you um, that we would like to share uh, again, and that's from Mulana Sayyid Ali Naqwi. So with that, let's go to Sayyid, Sayyid Naqwi first. The Holy Quran is a book of life. The Holy Quran soothes our heart, our soul. The Holy Quran pleases our eyes as we recite. And most important, with recitation comes the understanding of the verses of the Holy Quran.
السلام عليكم شبنا منتي عيد مبارك to you and your family إن شاء الله يكون well So I want to first introduce you. Um, I we've we've known each other for 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 quite some time. Um, I want for those of you who do not know you, although I know that's probably a minority here. Um, Shabnam Anti is 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 a is a lady of many talents. Um, Shabnam uh, Anti is um, currently serving as the principal of the Husseini Madrasa in Los Angeles. She has served in this position and as a Quran teacher and a Madrasa teacher. Excuse me. For, for multiple years. Um, just, just a few words, Chabra Manti, I don't want to embarrass you, but I think that I have to mention the, the, uh, a, f a few uh, points um, and, and a few characteristics that, that, that I've really benefited from from, from you. Um, and to me, it's really your, your, your leadership style. You really bring together the right level of empathy with really high emotional intelligence while, while still ma remaining uh, and maintaining affirmity. So very very different leadership style that that I that, that that I really appreciate, and I think this feeds very well into that leadership development program that that you have been a very critical and instrumental part, um, and brought this program to many of our communities um, across North America. So, um, Shalomati, today what I wanted to do was to really bring you into this conversation. I think you heard the conversation that I had with Brother Zuhair. Um, around the vision, mission, and execution of this Ikra Quran competition, um, and and th there was a there were a few things that I wanted to um, reflect um, with you and kind of get a little bit more around your experience and, and your perspective. So I hope I hope that's okay with you. Absolutely, it's fine with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. By the way, no. thank you very much. Asan, Asan, thank you for 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 joining me. And you will also. Um, I also want to thank you in advance. For, for joining me and co-hosting the awards. I know you, you will be helping me in, um, in presenting the awards to, to, um, to, 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 to the audience. Um, so, so the first question that I, you know, um, that, that I want to kind of think about and reflect with you is from your perspective, um, your experience as a madrasa principal, as a madrasa teacher, um, you were also the point of contact for the Los Angeles Jamaat working with the ICRA team. Um, how, how do you see us in our madaris? How do you see us in our um, Sunday schools across North America integrating Quran, Quran learning, Quran recitation, Quran tafsir um, in, in, into, into the students and into our curriculum? And, and where do you see challenges that you think we need to kind of focus in and, and overcome? So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you know, it is uh, the Quran, the topic of the Quran, is definitely one that requires a little bit of thought. And you asked me about if we see any challenges. And I was thinking as you were talking that perhaps there are you know, three that come to mind. Because first, the first and foremost thing is in our schools, in our Sunday schools in particular, maybe we focus about 30 to 40 minutes uh, in a class uh, to teach the Quran. And then we have a group of students within that class that have varying levels of, of expertise. Um, and at some point, the madrasa and the school has to categorize them. So you may have uh, a classroom that has different ages, different cap capabilities, and also a very limited amount of time to spend one-on-one -on -one with each student. So as a general comment, teaching the Quran in a madrasa setting is a challenge in itself. And that's why uh, usually when I speak with our parents and they ask me for resources, I always tell them the Quran must be taught because it requires frequent learning. You cannot teach the Quran in a 30 minute session in the madrasa. So that is the one challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another challenge I see is because of uh, this, the Tarbiya team that came up with our fantastic curriculum has not been able to yet tackle the issue of Quran curriculum within a madrasa. Yeah. And they're working on it, that's my understanding. But I have to give a shout out to them. And we've heard from Brother Zuhair and the other speakers, the Quran is a jewel 
the Quran is our way of life. It is a guidance. So the Tarbiya team, the magnificent thing that they have done is that they have created and integrated the Quran within each of those of those uh, curriculum material. And so the students are automatically being introduced to the Quran in every chapter, in every level at the madrasa. Mm -hmm. So alhamdulillah, uh, they, are, they are doing a fabulous job there. And inshallah, we will be able to, at some point, be able to create a curriculum specific for the Quran mm -hmm. within the madrasa setting. Uh, that's uh, that's basically what we're dealing with today. No, and, yeah, no, I, I really like that, right? I mean, if we if we could have the the the, the uh, you know a similar version of the Turbia curriculum, which you know has they, they've put a lot of time into it, I think we need to do the same for for Quran. I, I fully fully agree with you. Um, let, let's let's move on, Shabnamanti. Um, in in my introduction, I I shared you know with everybody why I was interested in contributing and participating in this in this competition. Um, and it was more around the word competition, and and, and I I, I kind of sh um, shared the, the the mission and the vision from from, from the eye of the Quran. So um, I want to talk a little bit about this competition, right? And how how do you think? How do you see this competition? Um, how do you see us? Is it healthy? Is it something that is actually bringing us closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Our communities, right across across North America, we do a really good job of putting together volleyball competitions and soccer competitions. And so um, just reflect for us, you know, how how do you see a Quran competition um, and, and how is it that we should be entering it and exiting exiting from those competitions? Great, a uh, great question, really. A competition, when you give the reference to sports and maybe debate teams and things like that, you know, it is unique because there are people that are based, basing their uh, their uh, winnings or results based on their training and their practice and all of that. The Quran in itself requires training, practice, learning. But in addition, the Quran requires introspection mm -hmm. and internal reflection of a book of guidance a holy scripture that we can utilize within our lives. So creating a competition that resembles those in sports may not necessarily befit the Quran. However, having said that, creating competitions such as these are healthy. Healthy because they inspire, they encourage people. Um, is there a prize at the end? Yes. And as a point of contact for our madrasa here in Los Angeles, I always reminded everybody that at the end of the day, you are winning in the eyes of Allah. And I had a couple of lovely parents who, whose children could not even participate due to another commitment that weekend. But they said the girls or the children wanted to pretend that they were entering the competition so that they could memorize some of these surahs. And that was a challenge they presented themselves. So I think at the end of the day, competition is healthy. And what I see is in the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, we have a lot. And just in Southern California, where I live, we had three concurrent Quran competitions going on. And some of our students were participating in all three or at least more than one. And so it, it, it becomes very saturated in this holy month. And I understand the purpose, of course, the month of the Quran, the month of Ramadan. But what I see in your question that you asked me, where do you see this? What is your opinion? I see us moving beyond Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Because the children are already fasting. They are doing their du'as. They are going to school. Mm -hmm. They are reading the Quran. They are doing all these things. I would say if we go beyond the month of Ramadan for Quranic competition, allow a little extra runway for the children to practice, as Brother Zuhair said, you know, Two, three weeks wasn't enough, you know, once the PO, uh, the point of contact were communicating with the students. So, yes, I think um, it can go beyond Ramadan and we can have a marathon. We can have cahoots. We can talk about um, certain aspects of the Quran, maybe a little learning, maybe a tajweed quiz, maybe a, you know, tartil or fluency quiz. Who knows? But I see it going beyond Ramadan. 
Ahsant, Ahsanti. No, I, I, I agree. And I think this is kind of the vision that, that Zuhair was, was, was laying out. Um, so absolutely, I really, really um, like what you said, right, that the element of competition here um, is not different. We can't draw parallels to, you know, some of our worldly competitions. There's a, there's a higher goal here. So, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. So the, 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 the one of the things that I think um, that I wanted to get your opinion on, and this is something that, that comes up quite a bit in, 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 our, um, in, in, in our discussions um, at the madrasa level. Um, so all around us, right, outside our, our, our madrasas, um, in schools, in the corporate world, all around us, we hear, you know, things around diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, and I always reflect with with some of my friends, um, like minds, that you know Islam taught us these concepts um, as first principles in humanity long, long before um, you know we actually thought about diversity and inclusion. Um, but I, my my question to you, um, Shabramanti, is: Do you feel that at at the at the learning level, with with Quran, with Arabic? Um, with being able to pronounce or speak or tafsir or learning, um, do you feel that there are any imbalances, um, either gender or individual or geographical, that we face in the in in North America um, to, towards achieving our goals? Wow, diversity and inclusion. You know, it's wonderful that you brought this topic up because diversity and inclusion, like you said, was the advent of Islam where it uh, it totally you know the liberation of women for example mm. uh, started back then uh, diversity and inclusion is a buzzword in the corporate environment you know? everybody wants to make sure the minorities are included and you know every people from different backgrounds are included but uh, diversity and inclusion should not be taken lightly in islam because unfortunately, in our communities, the cultures interfere with Islam. Mm. And we are blessed to live in North America, where uh, I, I think because we are surrounded by no, um, secular, secular definitions of equality and diversity, uh, and some of our laws protect us, uh, so then we become more inclusive just by default. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as a message to those who live in countries where the cultures might interfere uh, with inclusion and whether it's gender or race or whatever, we have to work a little harder in that. Now, circling back to the madrasa mm -hmm. and, the, and the topic of the Quran, I would say that uh, there is no imbalance in that. Okay. Our mm -hmm. schools are uh, generally have great participation from both male and female, whether it's in the teaching staff or in the uh, student body. But I have to make an observation, and and I think, and I'm not sure if it's a general observation, but from what I have seen, having visited a few of the madares, that the majority of teachers tend to be women. Mm -hmm. And I, it is time for us to encourage more male participation mm -hmm. because we are molding the future generation uh, of leaders, both male and female. And each one of them require role models. Mm. And the role models for men also have to be there, especially men who have the same philosophy of diversity and inclusion of women and minorities. Okay. We are a blended community, a community of multiracial, multi-ethnic, uh, and our teachers and the message of the Quran should be, should be transmitted in the same regular, in the same format of inclusion. That the message is so strong, I cannot tell you. And we are so fortunate living in North America. There are academies of learning there are workshops and classes that are go going on for both adults and children in, in relationship to the Quran. And we're getting into what Sayyid Muhammad Rizvi said, it is important to understand the Quran, the tafsir, the essence, the, the heartbeat of the Quran. You know, It's not enough for us to just spew the words 
The words mean nothing if they're not followed by action. And so it is absolutely important that we communicate the message of the Quran concurrently. So um, uh, I hope I didn't take too much time to answer that one. But uh, thank you. This, this is why you were on this, you, you, you were on this panel, uh, Shavna Monti, and I think you're, you're speaking to, 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 to some very, very critical and important um, you know, important things that at the Madaris level, we, we, we have to re kind of really think about and incorporate. And this is all about, you know, like to your first point, how do we have a Tarbiya version of the Quran curriculum, right? And how do we kind of bring that forward? Yep, exactly. Exactly. Asante. So I think we're going to move on now. Um, and the, the next um, item, right before our award ceremony beginning, um, is we have a short message from Sister Nazmina Danji. Right after this message, Shabna Manti and, 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 and me and I will be back um, to bring you the awards of the 2021 Ikra Quran competition. Thank you. The Prophet وسلم, said a beautiful hadith describing wonderful people like yourselves who memorize and carry the Qur'an within themselves. He said, Hamalatul Qur'ani humul mahfufuna bi rahmatillahi al malbusuna bi nurillahi azza wa jal. And that means that the bearers of the Qur'an, meaning those who memorize it, are enveloped in Allah's mercy and dressed in Allah's light. So congratulations to you all for being in that beautiful state. Okay, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. We will now start and begin the awards ceremony. Um, this is the main event that all of us have been have been waiting for. So without further ado, um, we're going to first start as as brother Zuhair um, had outlined for us the quiz competition. And this year as he stated um, and, and uh, outlined that the the quiz competition um, was um, was very well uh, um, participated in, and we um, are actually going to be recognizing all those students that received the um, a, a complete score of a hundred percent. So, um, with that, uh, let's start with Group A um, awards for the quiz competition. Um, the slide should be coming up. This is group A, ages four to five. So the first one is, um, we're not gonna be calling out all these names because we have quite a few names here, but uh, as you see your name here, I want to congratulate you on your participation and congratulate you for achieving a 100% score. May Allah increase your tawfiq and inshallah, um, you will continue to participate in this competition and others uh, throughout. So this is Charamanti, the, the youngest age group of group uh, four yeah. to five years old. This is the cutest age group. They're all cute, but this is the cutest. <laughs> yeah. Mashallah, it's great to see participation from across all our madaris across Mashallah. North America. Mashallah. Okay, let's move on um, now to um, the quiz participation and 100% score for group B. And the quiz participation, I have to say, was uh, was uh, wonderful because they had this prep material that they were given, which was a wonderful learning for each of them. And alhamdulillah, you know, many of them were looking forward to it. So yeah, uh, yeah, no, I think that they, they had given them the you know right resources, and I think um, uh, it, it was at least um, enlightening and insightful. So hopefully, people were able to learn. From that as well. So remember, these are all the students and all the participants who achieved 100% scores um, in, in, in the quiz um, that they did. Yeah, mashallah. It's a 
big group, a uh, good group of students that are coming around. And, and as you said, they're represented across across the region, you know, across Canada and the United States. And you can see uh, it, it, the map that Zuhair had shared with us. It went, it was beautifully laid out. Of course, most of it was on the East Coast um, because the population is centric there. That's but cute. Alhamdulillah, Central America and Canada and West America and Canada was also represented, uh, which to me was a, a beautiful thing. Yeah, I, I agree. Next is Group C. Um, again, quiz competition. These are all the participants that achieved a hundred percent score in the quiz. Um, and yeah, gentlemen, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, you know what I like about um, what Zuhair brought in was that you know there were participation from some of our youngest and smallest communities as well. I didn't I didn't realize that actually there was a community. Um, or participants from Buffalo, New York as well. So it's good to see that, right, there's people across that are participating. Very true. And I also uh, noticed that uh, this particular age group here, Group C, when you look at an age group of 9 to 11, now these are students who are probably most likely fasting as well. Mm. Uh, so now you get to that uh, area of growth in our lives where you are now responsible for a lot more in your life. And alhamdulillah, many of these kids were probably fasted uh, many in the month. Um, the girls, I imagine, probably did the whole month because yep. <laughs> they yep. fit in that category. Um, absolutely. So, absolutely. It's, a, it, it's getting more exciting now as mm -hmm. they get older. Yeah, no, mashallah, you're absolutely right. It's a good, good point that this is the age group that the girls will all be fasting and, and they participated. And many of them, as you can see here, have scored 100% on this quiz. So mashallah, well done to all of them. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. The, um, the schools that are represented also, I mean, you can see that even in the, in the Eastern Canada, uh, the area there are so many madaris just in that area alone yeah. uh, you know within a hundred miles you can see how many of the schools are there uh, which creates more fun in the competition you know competitions are can be hair raising but if you know your friend from another madrasa who's participating oh yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly I, it, the great great way to motivate yourself right then um and, and to know that you have friends or family members that are participating as well yes, um, yes. all right so our next next group there um is group d again this is the quiz competition all of these participants have achieved a hundred percent in the quiz mashallah and I don't know if, uh, and I, I, I imagine that almost every one of our uh, centers, our masajid, whether we were doing them virtual or in person uh, on a very controlled level, depends on where you live. Mm. Uh, I would imagine, it, at least I can speak for uh, the, the center here in Los Angeles. Many of these, this age group now, as you get to group D, Mm -hmm. And E, they are also reciters at our at our program. So they would recite Dua Iftitah and and Joshan Al Kabir and all of these other other worship acts of worship. So again, a shout out to these age groups that are now fasting, preparing for their uh, other recitations, and uh, so they're you know they're now being challenged a little bit more here. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, I, I think it's good. And you know, a, a lot of these kids were, as you would imagine, this this year, I think two or three years ago, Ramadan was falling in the summer, right? And, yeah. and, uh, and, 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 you know, kids were probably a little bit more relaxed, I would imagine. But this, like you're saying, this age group is probably trying to juggle many different things. And this year, um, with, with school and everything being virtual, um, it was probably very, very stressful. Exactly, exactly. But mashallah, look at this. I mean, the list is wonderful. You know, mashallah. I think as Zohair had said, over 350 students participated. That's correct. Uh, this is a wonderful percentage. Yeah. Yeah, no, agreed. And our final category, this is again for the quiz. All of these people achieved 100% is group E. This gentleman is the eldest group of kids that participated now. Yes. This is the age where they're prepping for college or they're in college. Um, 
they are uh, they're figuring out young adulthood and how to deal with their parents who don't understand them. <laughs> <laughs> So kudos to this group. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No. Um, so um, we're, we're going to transition now to um, the open recitation and the memorization within each group. So before we do that, um, and then I'll hand over to Shabna Manti to lead that. Um, but let's just recite one loud salawat for all our participants in the quiz in the quiz section. So Allahumma <laughs> salli ala Muhammad. Muhammad. Excellent, excellent, absolutely. The awards program is going to be um, is going to be exciting because everyone's waiting for it. Okay, now there were two categories. There was the open recitation and the memorization. Okay, but in Group A, it was only um, memorization. There was no open recitation. So now we're going to go through the slides and we're going to um, we're going to call out the names. So as they pop up, I will be saying the names, Abbas will be saying the names, and we're just going to have a good time with this. You know, we don't have any, we don't have any um, streamers or noisemakers, but you know, if you're in your homes, just do that. High five each other. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Ah, once again, our wonderful uh, group A ages four to five in the female category, our top uh, students who uh, in the memorization category are Fatima Zahra Zaidi from Montreal, Iman Razvi from Somerset, New Jersey, uh, Junaina Zahra Bangash from uh, Orlando, Florida, and Leila Fatima Kaki from Kirkland, Washington. Congratulations to you. Uh, oh, more. Okay, Ruqayya Zahra Alarakia from Toronto, uh, the Al Qaim study, because Toronto, I think, has a few. Uh, Ruqayya Abdul Qadir from Somerset, New Jersey. Sumaya Moladina from Al Hadi Center in Toronto. Zahra Alibai from Al Qaim Center in Toronto. Congratulations. That's uh, awesome. Okay, now we're going to go to the male um, group A, ages four to five. So again, these are the top performers that we're recognizing within each of these groups. Our first one is Ali Hasnain Lakani from Atlanta, Georgia. Ali Mahdi Karim from Minneapolis, Hadi Abbas Jaffa from Edmonton, Muhammad Hassan Suleiman from Toronto, this is the Al Hadi Center, Yusuf Panju from Toronto, again from Al Hadi Center. Let's see if there's more. All right, I think that was it within this category. So back to you, Shabnamanti. All right, I think we're now going to go over to Group B. And uh, Group B, um, now, uh, I think we will start with the memorization again. This time it is ages six to eight. Asia Deuji from Al Hadi Center in Toronto, Alia Fatima Lalji from Orlando, Ayat Fatima Haider from Montreal, Bishin. Alo Beidi from Austin, Texas, Iman Zahra Merchant from Al Qaim in Toronto. And we are continuing. This is a pretty uh, large category of uh, recognition. So we'll move on to Inaya Panju from Al Hadi in Toronto, Leila Karim from Az Zahra in Minneapolis, Sara Bashir, Az Zahra, Minneapolis, Sajida Muhammad Al Muntadar Brampton. Sakina Balu from Al Ahad, Allentown. This is great. You can see the Canadian, Northern North US uh, Madaris represented well. Awesome. And continuing in the same category of Group B female, Zahra Mustafa Kimji from Toronto, Al Qaim, Zainab Daud Ali mm -hmm. from Orlando, Florida, Zainab Fatima Khalfan from New York, Al Husseini. 
and Zainab Jamal from Al Husseini in New York as well, mashallah. And that concludes the female uh, Group B memorization top student. Asante. So now we're going to go to the male Group B. Is that right? Is open recitation for the female next one. Oh, so sorry. we're going to do, yep, we'll continue with the girls and that slide should come up pretty soon here. This was the category where they were given to open the Quran at any point and recite. Mm -hmm. So the group, uh, th this group B ages six to eight were Alina Zahra Butwala from Hicksville, New York, Al Husseini Madrasa. Amina Zainab Somani from Al Hadi in Toronto, Inaya Panju from Al Hadi in Toronto, Khadija Raza from Al Husseini Madrasa, New York, Maryam Fatima Jafar from Al Ahad in Allentown. And uh, we will continue with this category. And you might have noticed already, if you haven't, they're in. In, in alphabetical order first name. So we're not picking on any student's performance. Okay, continuing, it's Muhaddisa Merchant from Al Qaim, Toronto, Sakina Ballu from Al Ahad, Allentown, Zamina Dewji from Orlando, and Zainab Daud Ali from Orlando. Congratulations to all of you girls. MashaAllah. Okay, so we're going to go now to the boys. Um, this is group B. The first category here is in the memorization. So the first um, category, um, yep, memorization. Um, Ali Adil Fadel from Madrasa Zahra, Richmond, British Columbia. Ammar Hassan Zahra from Orlando IEC Academy. Hadi Fahim from Al Hadi Study in Toronto. Mahdi Shane Bas Juma from Al Muntadir in Brampton, Muhammad Ali Ahmed, Al Husseini Madrasa in Hicksville, Muhammad Hussein Khajehian, Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Continuing on, Puyan Dazfarnia, Iman Study in Kirkland, Washington, Qasim Ali Jawad Rajani, Al Qaim Study in Toronto. Taha Ismail Okera, again, Al Qaim Study Toronto, Yasin Mohan, Al Hujat Hamilton, and Zaki Sheikh from Al Husseini Madrasa in Hicksville. So, this was the memorization within Group B. And now I believe we'll move to the open recitation within Group B. So, the reciters that we are acknowledging are Ammar Aliasgar Hussein, Aliasgar Gulam Hussein from Al Qaim Center, Toronto, Ammar Hassan Raza from Orlando, Azian Hussein Zaidi from Jafaria School of Central New Jersey in Somerset, Hadi Fahim, Al Hadi Center, Toronto, Muhammad Ashad from IEC Academy, Orlando. Muhammad Ali Ahmed, Al Husseini Madrasa Hicksville. Muhammad Muntadir Khaki from Madrasa Al Zahra, Richmond, British Columbia. Pakan, Pakan Dad Farnia, Iman Study, Iman Sunday School, Kirtland, Washington. Puyan Dad Farnia, Iman Sunday School, Kirtland, Washington. Yusuf Musa, Madrasa Al Zahra, Richmond, British Columbia. So I think that completes Group B with the boys. MashaAllah, congratulations to all of you. Very good. I'm going to go next now with the group C. Uh, again, this age group was probably fasting as well. So congratulations to all of you in this memorization category. Alia Muhammad from Az Zahra Madrasa, Minneapolis. Balkis Fatima Bimji from Al Ahad Madrasa in Allentown. Fahima Pira from Al Qaim Center in Toronto. Fatima Fazl from Al Hadi Center in Toronto. Hanna Walji from Al Ahad Madrasa in Allentown. And I know because we're at the H, there's more to come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hanna Chandu from Al Muntadir in Brampton. Isra Hassan from Al Muntadir in Brampton, Ontario, that's Canada. Misha Sayani from Madrasa Zahra in Richmond. 
Samia Merali, Islamic Ahlul Bayt Association in Austin, Texas. Sakina Daudali at IC Academy in Orlando. And there's more. Drum roll. <laughs> Very good. Sania Sheikh, Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Susanna Kazim, Husseini Sunday School, Los Angeles. Zainab Chatriwala, Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Zuha Fatima Muqaddam, Madrasa Az Zahra in Richmond, British Columbia. Wonderful. Well done. Now we're going to go to open recitation for the girls in this category of Group C. Uh, and inshallah, the slide is coming up and the winners or the recognizing for top students are Alia Sara Patel from Iman School in Kirkland, Washington. Amira Zainab Zaidi from Al Qaim Center, Toronto. Bilqis Fatima Bimji from Al Ahad Madrasa in Allentown. Fatima Fazal from Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Iman Fatima Somani from Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Numa Zahra from Az Zahra Madrasa, Minneapolis. Samia Merali from Islamic Ahlul Bayt uh, at Austin, Texas. Sakina Daudali at the IEC Academy in Florida in Orlando and Sani Zehra Rizvi from Jafria School in Somerset, New Jersey. There's more, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Sania Sheikh from Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Zainab Zehra Hirji from IEC Academy, Orlando. Zainab Balu from Al Ahad Madrasa Allentown and Zainab Jaffer from Al Muntadr in Brampton, Ontario. Off to you, Abbas, for the male category. Ah, thank you, thank you. So, with the open, with the memorization first in Group C, ages nine to eleven, with our boys. Drum roll. <laughs> Ali Zahid Datu from Al Qaim Center, Toronto. Fayaz Lalji, IEC Academy, Orlando. Hani Ramtullah, Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond, British Columbia. Hassan Parpia, IEC Academy, Orlando. Hussein Daya, Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville, New York. Mikhail Karim, Az Zahra Madrasa, Minneapolis. Rahil Hassan Al Arakia. Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Suhail Abbas Moledina, Al Hadi Center, uh, Toronto. Sayed Mahdi Raza Nakui, Al Muntazir, Brampton. And I believe that's it for the memorization in Group C. We'll now move on to the open recitation in Group C. Ages 9 to 11. This is for the boys. Ammar Ladak, Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond. Ayan Ali Qasam Ali, Islamic Ahlul Bayt Association in Austin. Hadi Hassan Datu, Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond. Hassan Parpia, IEC Academy, Orlando. Kian Hassan Devjiani, Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville. Muhammad Hadi Datu. Al Qaim Study Center, Toronto. And now um, we'll continue. Muhammad Ali Hussein, Al Ahad Madrasa, uh, Allentown. Mustafa Yusuf Hussein, Al Zahra Madrasa, Minneapolis. Salman Hashem, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Suhail Abbas Moridina, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. And Sayyid Muhammad Wasi Haider Zaidi. Shia Madrasa in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay, Chavnamanti, now over to you to introduce our next section. Yes, you know, one of the most uh, fascinating uh, thing with this Iqra competition was the category of the Group S, uh, also known as the special needs. Group S, um, you know, uh, our students who you know they've put in a ton of effort into this, much like the other students. So we would like to recognize the boys and girls in this category who have now achieved their um, uh, Quran recitation 
uh, in this in in this competition this ikra competition so let us wait for the names to come up and then we want to give a shout out to this wonderful boys and girls abbas yusuf ali from iec academy orlando ali ahmadi uh, al mahdi madrasa in edmonton ali raza sultani from al qaim center in toronto on Sayyid from Islamic Center uh, Ahlul Bayt uh, in Austin, Hasnain Haider Ali from Al Qaim Study Center Toronto, Junaid Dirani Al Hadi Study Center Toronto, Mahdi da Mahdi Datu from Al Hadi Study Center Toronto, and uh, coming more in this category, Mikhail Abbas Menzies from Al Hadi Center Toronto, Muhammad Hadi Abbas from Al Hadi Center Toronto, Sajjad Kambar from Al Hadi Center Toronto, Serena Fatima Merchant from Al Hadi Center Toronto, Sayyida Iman Hasnain Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown, and Zahra Murphy, Al Hadi Center Toronto. Masha'Allah. Let's, yeah, Masha'Allah. Let's all recite uh, one big loud salawat in all of our homes. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Ali. Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Okay, we'll now move on to the next category, Group D. We'll start with the boys. This is um, uh, the older age group. Um, the, the slides will be coming on. We'll start with the memorization first. <clears throat> Ahmad Sharafuddin, Islamic Ahlul Bayt Association in Austin. Ali Saheb Nazar, Madrasa Al Zahra, Richmond, British Columbia. Ali Shahid Juma, Al Qaim Study, Toronto, Ontario. Ali Abbas Bimji, Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Ammar Hasham. Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Arian Khalfan, Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville, New York. Hussein Abbas Jaffer, IEC Academy, Orlando. Jabir Dala, IEC Academy, Orlando. Jawad Merali, Islamic Ahlul Bayt Association in Austin. Kazim Ratansi, Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Mahdi Huda, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Muhammad Ali Rashid, Madrasa Al Zahra, Rashman, British Columbia. Persa Dadfarnia, Iman Study Center, Kirkland, Washington. Saif Khalfan, Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville, New York. Sayyid Muhammad Ali Zaidi, Al Qaim Study Center in Toronto, Ontario. So that completes our memorization in Group D of the age group 12 to 15. We'll now move to the open recitation. Adil Dala, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Ahmad Sharafuddin, Islamic Ahlul Bayt Association, Austin. Ali Abbas Bimji, Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Arian Kalfan, Al Husseini Cent Al, Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville, New York. Jabir Dala, IAC Academy, Orlando. Kashif Ali Jafar, Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond Hill, British Columbia. Kazim Ratansi Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Mahdi Huda, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Muhammad Abbas Ali, IEC Academy, Orlando. Parsa Dat Farnia, Iman Study School, Iman Sunday School, Kirkland, Washington. Saif Khalfan Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville, New York. And finally, Sayyid Hussein Mahdi, Shia Madrasa in Montreal, Quebec. Shalom to you, over to you. Okay, very exciting category, Group D. And we are going to now recognize the girls, ages 12 to 15, who have achieved in their memorization category. Alia Panju from the Shia Madrasa in Montreal. Asia Daya, Madrasa Az Zahra in Richmond. Azka Sayani, Madrasa Az Zahra in Richmond. Dia Ibrahim in Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Ilham Ismail Okera, Al Qaim Center in Toronto. 
Fatima Allu Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Fatima Khalfan Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Fatima Zahra Ballu Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Malika Saleh Muhammad Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Michal Fatima Zaidi Al Qaim Center, Toronto. And Zainab Dewji from IEC Academy, Orlando, Florida. That's the memorization category. We now move over to the open recitation category for group T D ages 12 to 15 for the girls in the community. Ishal Fatima Ravjani from Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Fatima Allu from Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Fatima Khalfan Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. Malika Pira, Al Qaim Center, Toronto. Malika Saleh Muhammad, Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Samana Natu, Madrasa Az Zahra in Richmond, British Columbia. Sayyida Fatima Naqvi from the Shia Madrasa in Montreal. Zahra Dala from Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Zayma Fatima Muqaddam from Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond. Zia Fatima Yusuf Ali from IEC Academy Orlando and Zobia Ibrahim from IEC Academy Orlando. Well done, girls, and looking forward to the next group now. MashaAllah. All right, I'm going to take over. So this is our final group, Group E, ages 16 to 18. We'll start with the boys. <clears throat> Ali Sajjad Sharif Zada, Al Hadi Center, Toronto, Ontario. Muhammad Kamal Somji, IEC Academy, Orlando. Qais Ibrahim, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. So, this was the memorization um, awardees uh, for Group E. We'll now move to the open recitation. Ali Sajjad Sharif Zada, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Hadi Yusuf Ali, IEC Academy, Orlando. Kumail Allu, Al Husseini Madrasa, Hicksville. Qais Ibrahim, Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Zamin Ali Okera, Al Qaim Study Center, Toronto. So, mashallah, congratulations to all of you. Back over Thank to Southern Monty. Thank you. In our final category here in Group D, ages 16 to 18 for the female participants. And the top reciters in this category are, for the memorization one, Malika Ratansi from Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Musarat Jamal from Al Hadi Center, Toronto. Zahra Batul from Al Qaim Center, Toronto. Mm -hmm. Zahra Walji, Al Ahad Madrasa, Allentown. That's that. Those are the four for the memorization category. And now we move on to the open recitation category in Group E for ages 16 to 18. Alia Zainab Suleiman from Al Hadi Study Center, Toronto. Amen Alalji from IEC Academy, Orlando. Asia Natu from Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond. Atina Ismail Ukera from Al Qaim Center, Toronto. Malika Ratansi from Al Husseini Madrasa, New York. Noor Al Huda Fadl from Madrasa Az Zahra, Richmond. Sana Abbas from Al Qaim Center, Toronto. Sara Fatima Jagani from Al Hadi Center, Toronto and Zahra Walji from Al Ahad Madrasa Allentown. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your efforts during this month of Ramadan and congratulations from the bottom of my heart and all those, uh, and Abbas, of course, I know from you as well to all of our participants. Wassalamu alaikum. Enjoy. And now I would like to close this session. Uh, we have taken almost two hours of your time to watch this.
And I know it's hard. Hopefully you took some popcorn out and you did what you needed to do to stay connected. But we are completely delighted on behalf of the Iqra Nasimco competition, on behalf of the SIL organization, on behalf of all the teachers and the judges and the parents. And most importantly, I want to thank you all, parents, children, those who chose to sit and watch this show, those who wanted to help in the background, the judges, the moderators. And I am going to give a shout out to our wonderful producer, Muhammad Ali, who is, uh, has been working you know, you know that you know that uh, analogy, the duck on the water, they seem to flow and glide so graciously, but you know their feet below are working, working, working. That would be our Muhammad Ali in the background here. So on behalf of all of us, I really would like to thank all of you for joining. Congratulations to everybody. And I know all of you participated in multiple events in Ramadan but you made this one well worth my time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.